basta lahat ng lahat ng ano lahat ng responses kakantahin kakantahin for the kingdom except for the kingdom so minsan nga po kung ako kung kalimutan nyo ako so nang kailangan nga kung nakikimulaw na so kung ang proses na saan ka lang kasi sa isang kapatid so wala na mga procession na so like hindi ko sa kapatid yung kapatid Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. We are celebrating this Mass for the eternal repose of the soul of Honorable Carlos M. Padilla. And our priest presider is Monsignor Jesus Romulo Ranyada with concelebrating priest Reverend Father Aristeo de Leon, both from the Diocese of Novaliches. Let us all rise and join the singing of the entrance hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, we gather today to give thanks to God for the gift of life bestowed on Honorable Carlos Padilla, our brother in Christ. 
we entrust the soul of our brother Carlos to the God who has created him, formed him, called him to serve our nation as a congressman, governor, but also as a family man, husband to Ate Ruth, father to Jojo, May, and Paolo, and friend to many of us here gathered today. We thank God for the gift of life bestowed on us as well, called that we are to serve Him and our neighbor. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God, God and to and you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Lord God, Almighty Father, our faith testifies that your Son died for us and rose to life again. May our brother Carlos share in this mystery. As he has gone to his rest, believing in Jesus, may he come through him to the joy of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am going to tell you a mystery. Not all of us shall fall asleep, but all of us are to be changed in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet. The trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This corruptible body must be clothed with incorruptibility, and the mortal with immortality. Then will the saying of the scripture be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and sin gets its power from the law. But thanks be to God who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Let our response be, out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. My soul waits for the Lord more than sentinels wait for the dawn. More than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel hope in the Lord. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Are you not aware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Through baptism into his death, we were buried with him, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, 
we too might live a new life. If we have united with him through likeness to his death, so shall we be through a like resurrection. This we know, our old self was crucified with him so that the sinful body might be destroyed and we might be slaves to sin no longer. A man who is dead has been freed from sin. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we are also to live with him. We know that Christ, once raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no more power over him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us honor the Holy Gospel. Spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The reign of God can be likened to ten bridesmaids who took their torches and went out to welcome the groom. Five of them were foolish while the other five were sensible. The foolish ones, in taking their torches, brought no oil along. But the sensible ones took flasks of oil, as well as their torches. The groom delayed his coming, so they all began to nod, then to fall asleep. At midnight, someone shouted, The groom is here. Come out and greet him. Of the outcry, all the virgins woke up and got their torches ready. The foolish one said to the sensible, Give us some of your oil. Our torches are going out. But the sensible ones replied, No, there may be not enough for you and us. You had better go to the dealers and buy yourselves some while they went off to buy it. The groom arrived, and the ones who were ready went into the wedding with him. Then the door was barred. Later, the other bridesmaids came back. Master, master, they cried, open the door for us. But he answered, I tell you, I do not know you. The moral is, keep your eyes open, for you know not the day or the hour. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I have come to come have come to know the honorable Carlos Padilla when I was parish priest of the Good Shepherd in Fairview, where he used to come and attend Mass with Aterut. To us he is Kuya Kaloy. A writer has described his death as untimely. 
But the date remains, Friday, May 5, 9, 10 a.m. Perhaps for us, it is untimely, but for God, there is always a time. The parable in the Gospel reading today underscores this. Keep your eyes open, for you know not the day or the hour. Life is a journey. People take different roads, different paths, but the journey makes an impact on those who undertake the journey and those people who that person meets along the way. Carlos took the path of politics. Early on, when he was at the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, the first taste of politics during his student days when he served as president of the Supreme Council of the Supreme Student Council. And that experience perhaps inspired him to continue in the service of people. So he was, correct me if I'm wrong, the first and the youngest mayor of Dupax. Later on, he served in this great hall of Congress as a representative of Nueva Vizcaya. He served as deputy speaker and minority floor leader at different periods of his service here. But politics is not only limited to Congress. Politics for Kuya Kaloy led him also to serve as governor of Nueva Vizcaya since 2016 until the Lord has come and meet him and takes him to himself. Life is a journey, my dear brothers and sisters, and it's up to us to take what particular road or path we would take. For Carlos, it's politics, and it's because politics, perhaps for him, would enable him to give himself the best of himself to God. Pope Francis describes politics as one of the most noble vocations, especially if politics remains at the service of the common good and in the service of human dignity. And those things precisely are in the minds, are in the mind of Carlos, the common good. And that's why he authored several laws and sponsored several laws, particularly in the service of education. Pope Francis also once said, if you want to change a generation, invest in education. Carlos had anticipated that as he made sure that education will be better off once he leaves our country. My dear friends, we thank God for the gift of 
Carlos to us, who has been a brother to many of us, a friend, a family man, husband, father to you, grandfather perhaps also. And we thank God for sustaining him on the path of politics that served the common good and promoted education. Generations will be gradually transformed because of what Representative Carlos did for education. And Nueva Vizcaya would never be the same again because of the generous, selfless service and love that Carlos, Governor Carlos, has shown to the people of Nueva Vizcaya. May the good Lord bless Carlos for the good things he has done for many people, for the road that has led him to various places with the same desire to serve and to transform the lives of people from bad to good, from good to better, from better to the best that he could possibly do. We shall miss Kuya Paloy. But we are also at the same time inspired by his life of service, by the kind of politics that he has practiced. May Jesus welcome him to the home of the Father. His life's journey continues to the home of the Father. May we also find welcome in the same home with the kind of life we live. And for those of you who are in politics, may the Lord bless you. Pope Francis also tells us that the best that we can do is to offer prayers for our politicians. But I think also politicians, the best that they can do, especially in moments of trials and difficulties, is prayer. Prayer draws us to God. Prayer always reminds us of what's truly important in life. Prayer reminds us of what we can do with God, with the short life that He has given us, with the time, talent, and treasure that He has bestowed on us. And so today, we pray with gratitude to God. Thank you, Lord, for giving us Carlos, your son, who has been a good brother to us all. May he rest in your peace. And may his memory continue to remind us of how much you want to love us in this world. Amen. God, the Almighty Father, raise Christ, His Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask Him to save His people, living and dead. To Him we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
our brother Carlos was given the promise of eternal life in baptism. Lord, give him communion with your saints forever. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Carlos ate the bread of eternal life, the body of Christ. Raise him up, Lord, on the last day. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our brothers and sisters, our relatives, for all who were close to us and good to us. Lord, give them the reward of their goodness. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who have died in the hope of rising again. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your presence. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who have gathered here to worship in faith. Lord, make us one in your kingdom. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, hear our prayers for our dead brothers and sisters. Forgive them their sins and bring them to the fullness of your salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. sacrifice and Please yours rise. may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, receive the gifts we offer for the salvation of Carlos. May Christ be merciful in judging our brother Carlos, for he believed in Christ as his Lord and Savior. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. In him who rose from the dead, our hope of resurrection dawned. The sadness of death gives way to the bright promise of immortality. Lord, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. When the body of our earthly dwelling lies in death, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory 
and join in their unending hymn of praise. fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Francis, our Pope, Roberto, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember Carlos, whom we have called from this life. In baptism, he died with Christ. May he also share his resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to the rest 
in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with and your yours. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace.
Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, gave us the sacrament of his body and blood to guide us on our pilgrimage to your kingdom. May our brother Carlos, who shared in the Eucharist, come to the banquet of life Christ has prepared for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. With faith in Jesus Christ, we reverently bring the body of our brother to be buried in its human imperfection. Let us pray with confidence to God, who gives life to all things, that he will raise up this mortal body to the perfection and the company of the saints. May God give Carlos merciful judgment and forgive all his sins. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, lead him safely home to be at peace with God our Father. And may he be happy forever with all the saints in the presence of the eternal King. Let our response be, receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to Carlos' aid. Come to meet Carlos, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called Carlos take him to himself. May the angels lead him to Abraham's side. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Give Carlos eternal rest, O Lord, and may your light shine upon him forever. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Let our response be, Lord, save your people. Lord, save your people. By your coming as a man. Lord, save your people. By your birth. Lord, save your people. By your baptism and fasting. Lord, save your people. By your suffering and cross. Lord, save your people. By your death and burial. Lord, save your people. By your rising to new life. Lord, save your people. By your return in glory to the Father. Lord, save your people. By your gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, save your people. By your coming again in glory. Lord, save your people. Father, into your hands we commend our brother Carlos. We are confident that with all who have died in Christ, he will be raised to life on the last day and live with Christ forever. We thank you for all the blessings you gave him in this life to show your fatherly care for all of us and the fellowship which is ours with the saints in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. Welcome our brother Carlos to paradise and help us to comfort each other with the assurance of our faith until we meet in Christ to be with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the angels lead you, Carlos, into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Eternal rest grant unto Carlos, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon him.
amin Magkawalay Pag-ibig mo Ang tutulay Pauwi na Sa tahanan mo Pabalik na Sa iyo Eternal rest grant unto Carlos, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon him. May the soul of Carlos and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Let us go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks Amen. be to God. We will begin the necrological service. Thank you.
tanong mo.
Hey, check, check.
The invocation will be led by the Deputy Secretary General of the Interparliamentary and Public Affairs Department, Attorney Grace Andres. May we request everybody to please rise. Death is nothing else but going home to God. The bond of love will be unbroken for all eternity. Mother Teresa. Almighty Father, we are gathered here today to mourn the loss of our beloved former Deputy Speaker and Governor, the Honorable Carlos M. Padilla, whom his colleagues fondly call Kaloy. As we pay our last respect and grieve his untimely demise, cover us with your wings of love and bring healing in our hearts, especially in the hearts of his family who are with us here today. Please grant the family he left behind, especially his wife, Mom Ruth, his children, Carlos the Jojo II, Ruthie Maye and Carlo Paolo, and his grandchildren, the strength to keep going despite the void in their hearts for losing a loved one, and that they would find comfort and hope in your presence and the promise of seeing their loved one again. Lord, welcome Sir Caloy into your kingdom as someone who humbly lived his life according to your will by wholeheartedly serving not only the Novo Vizcayanos, but also the Filipino people as a whole. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the chance to know Sir Caloy, to share and enjoy the love and friendship with him while he was on earth. We will always remember him for his dedication and commitment to public service. Heavenly Father, we ask for your mercy and grace for Sir Caloy as he begins his journey into eternal life. Please bring him into your loving arms and grant him peace and rest. All this we ask of you in the mighty name of our Lord. Amen. Miss Mary, please be seated. Miss Mary Claire. M. Buiko from the Administrative Department will render a song entitled In My Life by the Beatles. Think about them, but 
put in my life I love them all No one, no one never ever lose affection for people and things like that before I know I'll love and stop and think of them But in my life I love them all I love you Feliciano Belmonte Jr., former representative of the 4th District of Quezon City and speaker of the House of Representatives during the 11th, 15th, and 16th Congresses. I was filled with immense sadness when I was informed of the sudden, sudden passing of my friend and compatriot, Governor and the former Deputy Speaker, Carlos M. Padilla. 78 is too young. He still had many years ahead of him. I can, and I can say that because I'm now 86. A veteran lawmaker and parliamentar parliamentarian par excellence, we worked together in the 10th, 11th, 15th, and 16th Congresses. In 2001, during the most crucial moments of the 11th Congress, when I ran as a speaker, his friendship and support was pivotal in securing our victory. As a recognition of his leadership, we elected Kaloy as our deputy speaker for Luzon. Back then, my daughter, Joy Belmonte, was still in graduate school in the UK, and none of my sons or siblings could help me with the Congressional Spouses Foundation, or CSFI. As my oldest friend and most senior house leader, I asked permission from Kaloy to request his wife and my kumare, Mayor Ruth Padilla, to head the CSFI in my term, and he agreed. Thank you, Ruth, for all your help. Soft-spoken but firm, Kaloy commanded great respect from his fellow legislators here in the House. He was never one for fanfare, gimmickry, or theatrics. He was here to work, and work he did. Masipag, maasahan, may principio at integridad. The gentleman from Nueva Vizcaya was indeed a strong but calm force in this house. As statesmen, our politics did not always align. Ang totoo niyan, iba, mga, iba nga ang ibinoto niyang speaker noong 2010 during the 15th Congress. But our friendship never wavered. We may not always have similar political views, but our respect for each other as colleagues and statesmen are constant, knowing deep in our hearts that in the end, we both our, serve our country and our constituents the best way we know how. In the 16th Congress, my final term as a speaker, 
Kaloy was again elected as one of our deputy speakers. He was then the most senior member of the Nacionalista Party, and his leadership was invaluable as we approved many life-changing pieces of legislature from 2013 to 2016. As we all mourn today the passing of Kaloy, who dedicated most of his productive life in service to our country and to the people of Nueva Vizcaya, we express condolences and gratitude to his family, to Ruth, to Jojo, to Mayi and Carlo Paolo, as well as his grandchildren. Thank you for sharing Kaloy with us. Allow me to share the last stanza of a poem, A Nation's, a Nation's Strength, by William Ralph Emerson. Not gold, but only men can make a nation great and strong. Men who for truth and honor's sake stand fast and suffer long. Brave men who work while others sleep, who dare while others shy, they build a nation's pillar deep and lift them to the sky. This is Kaloy Padilla, a builder, a statesman, and a man of honor. I could not put it better in my own words. Kaloy Padilla, my friend, my ally, my compadre, you have served the Philippines well. You have made your family, your beloved Nova Vizcayanos, and everyone here so proud and privileged to have known you. Paalam at salamat, compadre Kaloy. Godspeed, Kaloy. Thank you, Speaker. Eulogy by the Honorable Jose C. De Venecia, Jr., former representative of Pangasinan and speaker of the House of Representatives during the 9th, 10th, 12th, 13th, and 14th Congresses. Former Governor Ruth Padilla, Carlos Padilla Jr., and the members of the Padilla family, former Speaker Sonny Belmonte, distinguished incumbent and former members of the House of Representatives, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Political careers of leaders are crowded with moments. Today brings to us a moment of transcendental recollection, a bonding in time with men and women who have walked the walls, the halls of this great institution. Today we reminisce our moments with the man who devoted almost 30 years of his life in this great chamber by the power of his ideas and convictions he helped shape our national discourse by the landmark laws he penned he helped chart the course of Philippine history this does fitting and proper that we bid farewell to Carlos Padilla, a renowned son of Nueva Vizcaya. We also pay tribute to his legacy as mayor, as congressman, and governor, which will forever be etched in the history of the Philippines. In the House of Representatives, he served as deputy speaker, minority leader, 
and member of the powerful Commission on Appointments and the House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal. He authored game-changing pieces of legislation, such as providing free public school education and various forms of government assistance to students and teachers in private schools. He also penned the laws creating the National Commission for Culture and Arts, as well as the Commission on the Filipino Language. Kaloy Padilla and we first became colleagues in the 8th Congress from 1987 to 1992 under then Speaker Mitra. We often recall to him our fond memories of his beloved Nueva Vizcaya, as it is where my father served as judge of the court of first instance after World War II until his retirement in the 1960s. We also recall to him about our memorable summers in the town of Bayombong, Nueva Vizcaya, and that we studied there during our sophomore year in high school until our father decided to send us to the Dead de La Salle College in Manila the following year. During the 12th Congress from 2001 to 2004, Kaloy became the minority leader of this great house when we were elected for the third time as the Speaker of the House. The wise mind said, quote, there is no cure for life and death save to enjoy the interval. We all live on borrowed time. We cannot know for certainty how long we have in this world. Therefore, let us contribute our modest share in building a better world and let us strive to make our fleeting presence have a meaningful and lasting impact on the lives of our countrymen. May God bless you, Kaloy, and may you rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker Jody B. Eulogy by the Honorable Edsel C. Lagman, current representative of the 1st District of Albay, and also during the 8th, 9th, 10th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 17th, and 18th Congresses. My association with the Honorable Carlos Mapili Padilla, more fondly called Caloy, began in the 8th Congress, which was convened on July 27, 1987, almost 37 years ago. I was then a new fight legislator, but Caloy was already an experienced lawmaker, having been elected to the interim Batas of Pamansa at the age of 34. It is, port, it is important to underscore that the Eighth Congress, which was the revived legislature, after 14 years of the martial law regime when the Congress was padlock, was among the most productive. Major and historical laws were enacted during this Congress, among which are the Free Public Secondary Education Act of 1988, 
the law creating the Commission on the Filipino Language, the Act creating the National Commission on for Culture and the Arts, and the Philippine Nursing Act, which were principally authored by the then Representative Padilla. Caloy's full devotion to education, the Filipino language, and culture and the arts is indelibly manifested in the laws he had authored. He believed that education is the great equalizer for social and economic mobility and that the arts uplift man's mundane existence. The other vital statutes legislated then in the 8th Congress were the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law, the Generics Act of 1988, the Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards of Public Officials and Employees, and an act strengthening the prohibition on discrimination against women regarding the terms and condition of their employment. Among many others, of which Kaloy was invariably a co-author. During the Eighth Congress, bills had to pass the crucible of confrontation and the furnace of debates before they were approved. And Kaloy participated brilliantly in the deliberations and skillfully navigated through the confrontations. Kaloy not only authored laws of national significance, but he also had pet bills of local importance which were enacted into law, like the Nueva Vizcaya State University and the Philippine Science High School, Cagayan Valley Campus in Bayongbong. I tell young legislators that an ideal congressperson actively participates in national policy making and at the same time can bring home the bacon to his constituents. Kaloy was such an ideal legislator. Kaloy was a member of the 8th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 14th, 15th, and 16th Congresses. He was minority leader during the 12th Congress and deputy speaker in the 16th Congress. When I was the minority leader during the 15th Congress, Kaloy was among the outstanding opposition members of the House. In addition to being chairman of important committees, Kaloy was also a member of the Commission on Appointments and the House Electoral Tribunal, both of which are constitutional bodies. Not many politicians serve with distinction as legislators and as local executives. Kaloy was among the few who excelled both as a member of the Congress and as a local executive. In fact, he started his political career as mayor of the then undivided Dupax Nueva Ecija at the age of 31 and was on his third term as governor of Nueva Vizcaya at the time of his passing. Caloy was a member of the Alpi Beta Fraternity. Many Alpans are here this morning to honor a truly great Alpan in Caloy Padilla. Our condolences to Caloy's widow, former Nueva Vizcaya Nueva 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 Governor Ruth Rania Padilla, and children Carlos II, Ruthin May, and Carlos Pablo and seven grandchildren. We assure Caloy's family, friends, constituents, and admirers that this August chamber will always memorialize his name. And his pedigree his statutes are richly installed in the firmament of, land of landmark Philippine legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Lagman.
in lieu of Honorable Satur Ocampo, former representative of the Bayan Muna party list, the eulogy will be given by Honorable Rafael Capaeng Mariano, former representative, an Akpawis party list of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Congresses. Today, we are joined together to pay our last respect to one of the most accomplished and revered legislators of this August Chamber, the Honorable Carlos M. Padilla, former Deputy Speaker and Representative of the Lone Legislative District of Nueva Vizcaya during the 8th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 14th, 15th and 16th Congresses. Honorable Caloy Padilla had trudged a full circle. He plodded through grindstones and sharpest challenges in each of the public office he held and the constituencies he served. As the municipal mayor of the town of Dupax in the province of Nueva Vizcaya from 1971 to 1975, and Dupax del Norte from 1975 to 1978. As assemblyman during the interim batas and pambansa from 1978 to 1984. As representative of the Lone Legislative District of Nueva Vizcaya during the 8th, 12th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 14th, 15th, and 16th Congresses, and as governor of the province of Nueva Vizcaya from 1916 until his passing. Ladies and gentlemen, simultaneous with the legislative task during his stint in his August chamber, Honorable Padilla also actively participated and represented the House of Representatives as the chairperson of the 64th Council meeting for the Steering Committee of the Asia-Pacific Parliamentarians' Union, a PPU, held in Manila in 1998. Head of the Philippine delegation to the 60, 65th Council meeting of the APPU held in the Hyatt Regency, Saipan. Member of the Philippine delegation to the 10th Annual Meeting of the Asia-Pacific Parliamentary Forum, APPF, in Honolulu, Hawaii, on January 6 to 9, 2002. Sixth annual meeting of the APPF held in Seoul, Korea on January 7 to 10, 1978. International Level Organization Conference in Geneva, UNESCO General Assembly in Paris, 20, 20th ASEAN Interparliamentary Organization, now ASEAN Interparliamentary Assembly, held in Manila on September 19, from 19 to 24, 1999, and all other prominent international conferences in which he represented the House of Representatives in bilateral delegation. Honorable Padilla has witnessed and has ta was tireless and unrelenting in transforming the lofty goals and remarkable accomplishments until the very end, truly, it was a life well lived. Our presence today manifests our appreciation of the thrilling accomplishments of this man and the positive cha changes that will constantly reverberate in the lives of the people he had touched. Legacies, inspirations, the achievements, visions, and goals of former Deputy Speaker Padilla will not die with him, but will forever remain in the hearts and memories of his constituents, colleagues, friends, family, and loved ones with pride and fondness. I take this opportune, opportune moment to thank Honorable Carlos Padilla for the chance of working closely with him. 
Kami po'y nag-abot noon sa uh, 13th, 14th uh, Congresses. At talaga naman pong pagkakausap at kakwentuhan at katalamitam ko si uh, dating Congressman uh, Kaloy Padilla talagang parang walang pagod, masigla sa aming palitan, sa mga pagsusuri, sa napakaraming mga isyong pangsektor, panlipunan, pambansaman o mga international issues. Talaga pong uh, uh, habas siya ay nagsasalita eh, mga kasunod sa mga pagitan ng aming pagtalakayan ay yung kanyang hindi natin malilimutang halakhak po pag siya po ay talagang uh, tuwan-tuwa. No, po. It is with utmost pride and honor to pay tribute to Honorable Carlos M. Padilla, who will always be remembered as a humble, unassuming, and selfless man who unflinchingly dedicated the prime of his career to public service until his demise with paramount commitment and sincerity. In bidding farewell to our esteemed former colleague, I extend my deepest condolences to his family, most especially to his wife, former Governor Ruth Padilla, and his children, Carlos Jojo II, Ruthie May, and Carlo Paulo. May you be consoled with the thought that Kaloy is now in a better place with our Lord. Kakaloy, we pray for your eternal repose. Maraming po salamat. Thank you, Congressman Mariano. Eulogy by Sir Gerardo V. Calderon, KGCR Supreme Commander, Knights of Rizal. Pagpupukay po sa ating uh, pinarangalang uh, yung maong Sir Carlos N. Padilla, Knight Grand Officer of Rizal, at uh, sa ngalan po ng uh, Knights of Rizal International na pinamumunuan po ng uh, inyong lingkod sa buong mundo, ay uh, binibigyan pagkilala po ang mga soliraning isinagawa ng ating uh, Knight Grand Officer of Rizal, Sir Carlos N. Padilla, at isa po dito ay ang pagkilala sa pagkakaibigan nila po ng ating uh, isang kababayan na Jordanian, na si Mahmoud Asfor, na hindi lamang po sa salita, kundi ang Knights of Rizal po sa pamagitan ng Republic Act 646 na pinirmahan ng ating Pangulong Elpidio Quirino noong 1951 para isulong ang advokasya ng Rizalism ay maging Filipino identity, ang ating pong uh, pinararangalan ay hindi lang isinulong ang risalismo bilang Filipino identity, kundi ang mga utos at gawa na minandato sa Knights of Rizal na ang pagtatatag ng nasabing pinakamataas na rebulto ng ating bayaning Jose Rizal sa Nueva Vizcaya ay binibigyan pong pagkilala sa suliraning isinagawa ng ating pinaparangalan. At sa pagkakaibigan po nila ni Sir uh, Mahmoud Asfor ay uh, nagbunga at ang naging inspirasyon niya po bilang kanyang dapitan mismo ay ang Beba Vizcaya na sa panahon ng ating bayaning Jose Rizal, ang dapitan ay kanyang itransform, naging innovative ang ating bayaning Jose Rizal at ipinakita sa buong mundo na noong paman ay mayroon ng sustaining development goals at ito po ay mga tinuntungan at isinunod ng ating pinararangalan. Sa ngalan po ng Knights of Rizal, ay uh, bayaan niyo pong uh, uh, ipabot din ang pagbati ng uh, bayan ng Angono na kami ay nagtagpo. No, ako po ay po ng bayan at kanyang ina-advocacy ang Knights of Rizal at nang tumakbo po siyang uh, senador ay ra-share niya ito. In memoriam, farewell to you, Sir Carlos M. Padilla, KGOR former gov uh, governor, Nueva Vizcaya, and former Deputy Speaker, House of Representatives. 
Now that you have joined our departed brothers in the endless caravans that seeks passage to the incrustable abode of the blessed beyond, let it be written that the memory of our association and the oneness with you, Sir Carlos, will remain etched forever in the altar of the order and your chapter, which you animated so generously with the fire of your patriotism and bounty of your abiding concern for your countrymen and other peoples. We felt destitute and orphaned, orphaned by your loss. We called the numerous meetings you spent with us and the pilgrimage we had with you, the spirited exchange we shared on the life and writings of Dr. Jose Rizal and the plans for the order, which always ended as we made at you with reiteration of friendship and renewals of fraternal love. We also cherish those moments when with equal depth and breadth we, we cheered with you the happy endings and took on bridge and adjust wounds and the source that swept and crippled the motherland. All this will be hard to be to forget. And so with you passage from this earth to a new and eternal universe, may this memorial follow you, dear brother, wherever you may be, and although you could no longer feel the rain as it drops on Baguio City, nor admire the sun baked beauty of Kalamba and the Pitan, although you could no longer catch the mist that at the coming of evening shrouds of Rizal's beloved shrine, rest assured that we, the ones you left behind in the nightfall of your knighthood, shall carry on the noble task to enlighten people everywhere and patiently scribble on the page of time and enduring life. The omniscient thought, the triumphant, known that is God Jose Rizal. Brother, in our fraternal organization, we always say, not everything in you will die. Non omnis morial. Signed, your truly Supreme Commander, Gerardo V. Calderon, KGCR, Sir Emmanuel F. Calairo, Supreme Portuguese. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Calderon. Eulogy by Honorable Samuel S. Versosa, Jr., representative of the Tutok to Win party list and a member of the UP Alpha Pi Beta Fraternity, will be read by Mr. Keith De Leon, Lord Chancellor of the Alpha Pi Beta Fraternity. Ang nakalagay na sa pangalan ni Governor and former Congressman Carlos M. Padilla ay born September 19, 1944 at may dash sa gitna, tapos died May 5, 2023. Yung mga nagawa at accomplishments ni Governor Congressman Caloy Padilla sa dash na yun, sa nilagi niya sa mundo ay mga bagay na mahirap lampasan o pantayan lamang. Sa pamilya ng yumaong Brad Caloy, sa mga kasamahan niya dito sa Congress, mga brads ko sa Alpha Phi Beta Fraternity at mga kaibigan at panauhin, nasabi na karamihan ng mga mabuting nagawa ni Governor Caloy at siguradong marami pang itadagdag ang mga susunod na magsasalita. Si Governor Caloy po ay brad o kapatid namin sa Alpha Phi Beta Fraternity ng UP College of Law. Sumali siya sa amin noong 1967, kasabay niyang sumali si ngayon ay Finance Secretary Benjamin Jokno. Sa simula pa lang ng kanyang political career, ay gumawa na ng pangalan si Brad Caloy dahil ang nakaharap niya noong una siyang tumakbong assemblyman noong 1984 mula sa Cagayan Valley Region ay ang nooy political kingpin sa Cagayan Valley na si former Senator Leonardo Leone Perez na Brad din namin sa Alpha Phi Beta. Unbeatable daw noon sa Cagayan Valley si Brad Leone dahil naging campaign spokesperson pa siya noong unang tumakbong presidente si Ferdinand Marcos Sr. in 1965. Natalo si Brad Caloy noong una silang magharap ni Brad Leone sa batasang pambansa elections ng 1984. Pero pagkalipas ng tatlong taon, noong 1987, sa ilalim ng bagong konstitusyon, nag silang dalawa para naman sa Lone District ng Nueva Vizcaya. Nanalo na si Brad Caloy Padilla. Dahil na-dethrone niya ang nooy political kingpin ng Nueva Vizcaya, 
ay dito na nagsimula ang kanyang kwento bilang alamat ng probinsya ng Biscaya. Simula na rin siyang tawagin na Legend of the North. Buti na lang sa bandang huli, nagkaayos din silang dalawang magbrad. Let me read a short passage from the narrative of our fraternity history from the book On the Good Side of History, The Alpha Phi Beta Story, written by Brad Nelson Navarro. Caloy Padilla, the son of a former congressman from neighboring Nueva, Nueva Ecija, had been a protege of Leone in Sulano, where the Padillas had resettled. But Caloy obviously would not let fraternity seniority get in the way of personal and ideological conviction. In any case, he won a fair fight against the brother Alfan. The good news is that the two would reconcile and make peace long before Leone's death in 2007. Hindi pa alam noon ng taga Nueva Vizcaya na yung pagkapanalo ni Congressman Caloy noong 1987 ang simula ng kanyang magiging napakahabang serbisyo sa kanilang distrito na umabot ng 29 years. Naging member siya ng House of Representatives noong 8th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 14th, 15th, and 16th Congress. Napakarami niyang naisulong na mga batas sa haba ng kanyang serbisyo. Napakarami niyang natulungan na mga mahirap at nangangailangan hindi lang sa Nueva Vizcaya. Si Congressman Versosa po ay personal na natulungan ni Congressman Caloy dahil tinulungan niya itong mga mpanya, kaya naman isa ang tutok to win party list sa pinakamataas na nakuwang boto sa Nueva Vizcaya. Bilang tagapagsalita ng Alpha Phi Beta Fraternity, ay pinaparating ko ang aming mga panalangin at auspusong pakikiramay sa kanyang may bahay at mga anak, sa kanyang mga kamag-anak at mga supporters at constituents. Tanggapin niyo rin po ang aming pasasalamat para sa mga panahon na nakasama namin si Brad Caloy. At sa inyo po, Legend of the North, paalam po, Senior Brad Caloy. Maraming salamat ang pagandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Mr. De Leon. Eulogy by the Honorable Eduardo Brother Eddie C. Villanueva, representative of the CBAC party list and deputy speaker of the 18th Congress. Isang mapagpala po, makasaysayang araw sa lahat po ng mga nakikiramay sa Blessed family ng ating minamahal na Honorable Carlos Caloy Padilla. Sa pangalan po ng aming pamilya, ng aking mga anak, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva, Mayor John John, at yung aming bunso na si Pastor uh, Eddie Lancia, Joby Villanueva Binalia, at ng JIL Church Worldwide Movement, buong puso po na pinapabot ko ang pakikiramay sa buong pamilya ng ating minamahal na Caloy Padilla, of course sa pangunguna ni former uh, Nueva Vizcaya Governor Ruth Padilla, buting may bahay, ni uh, late Governor, former Congressman Carlos Padilla, at sa inyong mga blessed children, Jojo, May, and Paulo. Ang tos pusong pagkikiramay po ng uh, JIL movement. Bago po ako magbigay ng may kling, uh, Naisip ko po na napakarami ng uh, magagandang bagay tayong narinig. Kulang po ang isang libro para isulat ang mga dakilang achievements ng ating minamahal at ginagalang na Honorable Carlos Padilla. Uh, gusto ko lang pong uh, magwakas sa isang mekling panalangin. Pero bago po iyon, naalala ko ang ang sinasabi sa Biblia, give honor to whom honor is due. Bago naging member ng House of Representatives ang ating minamahal na Honorable Carlos Padilla, siya po ay naging outstanding professor sa Kuleyo sa Philippine College of Commerce. Isa po siya sa naging professor ko sa economics Naging magkaibigan kami sapagat kapwa kami naging student leaders ng Philippine College of Commerce. At hindi ko humakalimutan, bago siya naging congressman, isa siya sa most outstanding student leaders ng bansa 
sa amin pong panahon ng uh, generation of radical student leaders during the time of Dr. Nemesia Prudente who led the meteoric rise of a small, a small college for the, of the poor into the biggest uh, uh, people's university of the people in the people's university in the Philippines, the so-called Polytechnic University of the Philippines. Napakahalaga po ang role ni Honorable Carlos Padilla. Magkakasama po kami na nagrarali ng malaking rally sa Malacanang in fairness uh, during Marcos uh, regime. Noong panahon na yon, alam ni Atty. Romy Makalintal na narito sa ating kalagitnaan. Magkakasama po kami nagrarali doon sa uh, Malacanang. Pinapayagan po ng dating uh, uh, President Marcos ang mga libo-libong estudyante, mga profesor, doon po sa administration crown. Doon po kami nakipag-debate sa budget commissioner, mga cabinet members, and eventually being welcome in the very office of President Marcos. Si, Pres si Honorable Caloy Padilla po ang pangunahin naming radical student leaders. Siya po ang kasama ni Dr. Nemesio Prudente, sa po ng aming mga kasama, nakakumbinsi kay President Marcos na ang maliit na eskwelahan para sa may hirap na pinapabayaan ng ating pamahalaan na ibigay po ni President Marcos yung makapagal tenement na naging elephant, uh, parang white elephant, Wala, uh, idle na white uh, tenement, uh, tenement doon po sa Santa Mesa. For the first time, may higit sampung hektarya ay binigay po ng dating Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos sa School of the Poor sa Lipanto, ang Philippine College of Commerce, turned to be the biggest people's university in the Philippines with more than 70,000 enrollees. Tuwing, tuwing enrollment po, naalala ko, 30,000 ang rejected na enrollees because of the small budget of the biggest people's university. At kami po ni uh, kaibigang uh, Padi, sa PCC community po, kilala siya as Padi sa Kongreso Kaloy. Siya po ay uh, isa sa mga masasabi kong uh, naibang radical student leader. Makabayan, patriotic, nationalist, pero balansyado ang kanyang pananaw. Hindi siya extremist. At naalala ko po, na, nagigilid kami sa para, mga palaisdaan ng Ubando, ng Bulacan. Magkakasama po kami ni uh, Honorable Kaloy. Nagbigay po kami ng aralin para sa ikalilinaw ika at ikaayos ng pamumuhay ng mga magsasaka, mangingisda, manggagawa at mga estudyante. Hindi ko po makakalimutan, madalas nagigilid kami sa, sa yung, yung hong tinatawag na sa palaisdaan, kakusap namin ang mga mangingisda. Magdamag po yun, inaabot kami ng madaling araw. Hindi pa siya congressman nun. At nung pong siya ay uh, congressman, alam na alam ko, ang kanyang pagiging tunay na makabayan ay nagahari. At hindi siya na-involve sa mga panukalang batas na tutulong lamang sa mga vested interest groups kung hindi talagang tutulong sa marginalized sector of the society. How I wish there will be multiplied lawmakers like Honorable Carlos Padilla. At uh, sa oras mong ito, Marami tayong narinig at marami tayong marinig pa. Nais ko lang pong mag-lead sa isang, small, sa isang prayer sapagkat uh, siguro po tinakda ng Diyos na masama ko sa mga dakilang tao sa araw na ito na nagbibigay ng eulogy sa ating minamahan na kaibigan Kaloy Padilla. Bago po akong mag-lead ng isang special prayer for the family, ay naalala ko po na hindi na kami magkikita ni Kaloy, ni Padi, marahil doon sa eternity. Doon na lang kami magkikita. Uh, kaya po, 
gusto ko lang malaman ng lahat. During the height of COVID-19 pandemic, the Lord God spoke to my heart. Tell the people, preach to people, prepare for eternity. Prepare for eternity. Ang buhay po natin sa mundong ito, pinakamahaba na 100 years. Marahil 120 years katulad ni Moses. Marahil katulad ng ni Abraham, 140 years. Marahil katulad ni Joshua ni Caleb, 110 years. Si Kaloy po na isang great stageman sa ating bansa, 78 years old. Matanda lang po siya ng dalawang taon sa akin. Pero ako po ay uh, kulang po ang salita para bigyan ko siya ng parangal. Kaya po naisipan po ng ating opisina, introduced by si Back Party List Representative, ang inyong abang lingkod, Brother Eddie, ay nagpile po ng House Resolution 946, last May 8, on the very opening of this Congress, just for the information of everybody, especially our beloved countrymen, ang nakalagay po rito, a resolution expressing the profound sympathy and sincere condolence of the House on the death of Governor Carlos Padilla. Whereas Carlos Mapili Padilla, the Regent of the North, spent 29 years as representative of the Lone District of Nueva Vizcaya, including six years as Assemblyman in the Batasang Pambansa. He once served as Deputy Speaker and also as a Minority Leader. Whereas as, as a Congressman, he was among the principal authors of Republic Act 6655, which established and provided for free public secondary education in the Philippines. And RA 6728, establishing the private education student financial assistance scholarship. Dapat pong malaman to ng milyong-milyong kabataan sa ating bansa. The Educational Service Contracting Program for Private Schools and Other Programs. Malaki po ang role ni former Congressman, the late Governor Carlos Padilla, in ensuring the better future for the youth of the land. Whereas Padilla also took credit for the creation of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts and the Commission on Filipino Languages and the establishment of about 45 high schools in the province of Neve Biscaya for the information of mga constituents po at kababayan natin sa Neve Biscaya. 45 high schools in the province of Neve Biscaya, including the Philippine Science High School. Cagayan Bali Campus in Bayumbong and conversion of the then Nueva Vizcaya State Institute of Technology and Nueva Vizcaya State Polytechnic College into a university now known as Nueva Vizcaya State University. Whereas as the local chief executive of the, of the municipality of Dupax, Nueva Vizcaya, Governor Padilla is spearheaded. Remarkable contributions and the positive change he brought to the province towards a dynamic and progressive community. Whereas we mourn the loss of a remarkable individual who leaves behind a legacy of dedication, selflessness, and service. Whereas Padilla's life was an inspiration, not just to the people of Nueva Vizcaya, but to other fellow public servants. He is not only a man to be admired, but also a man to be emulated. Be it resolved, as it is hereby resolved, to express the profound sympathy and sincere con condolence of the House of Representatives on the death of a true legend, Carlos Mapili Padilla. Adopted, Honorable Eduardo Brother uh, Eddie Villanueva Sign. I do pray that the Honorable Members of the 19th Congress would immediately approve the said resolution giving the right tribute to a great man. Now, before I close in prayer, prayer for the, uh, especially for the blessed family, napakasakit po ang mamatayan. Just few, just three years ago, my, most be, my beloved wife, Sister Dory, after being assured by medical team of St. Luke's BGC that, the, uh, that, that simple cancer in her face was already remitted. Suddenly, pa uwi na kami after the last session. Big lang na heart attack. Two months after, 
our beloved Mayor Johnny at age of 42. Nakita lang yung mga narinig lang yung mga magsasaka sa Baguio, sa bank banquet. Umiiyak, natutunaw yung kanilang mga vegetables na hindi mabili. Bagamat may sakit siyang vasculitis, mahigpit ang walang doktor, magpahinga kayo, Mayor, even for 10 days sa hospital. He re she refused. She went to Baguio. She ordered tons of vegetables and then brought them all to Bukawe at lahat ng bahay sa Bukawe, regardless of political persuasion and religious persuasion, pinamigay niya. Inulit na naman, nagpunta uli sa Baguio. More than na naman ng million worth of vegetables, muling pinamigay. Huli na ho ng malamang ko, she is already dying in the hospital. At uh, pinagalitan ko ang ganyang mga alalay, bakit nilihim niyo sa akin? Bakit hindi niyo sinabi sa akin? May schedule siya sa Taipei Veterans Medical Center. Dahil kausig po na yung pastor namin doon. Kayang-kaya nilang gamutin ang vasculitis. Meron silang pangkontra sa pagbaba ng immune system. Sabi ko ng mga alalay ng aking anak, magagalit ko si Mayor. Mahigpit humbilin, huwag na huwag sasabihin sa kanyang daddy. Dahil during the height of COVID, baka raw po ako'y magpunta sa ospital at ako'y mag-COVID. Aminin ko sa inyo, napakasakit mamatayan. Purihin ang Panginoon. Meron hong sinabi sa Bible, It is appointed unto all men or is scheduled unto all men to die once and then the judgment. Sinabi ko po, binalong ko po ito kanina kay Manang Gina, the Venetia. It is appointed unto all men to die once and then the judgment. God said it. It is scheduled. Whether we like it or not, the Almighty God who created the heavens and the earth has the final say of our earthly existence. Kaya napakahalaga na habang nabubuhay tayo, nakahanda tayo for eternity. Dalawa lang ang eternity, eternal damnation in hell with Satan or eternal uh, eternal uh, life in heaven with the Creator. Dalawa lang ho, walang in between. And the choice is being being uh, turned over by God to people. God is not a dictator. He respects the free will of every human being. Kaya po, gusto kong huling sabihin sa buhay ni Honorable Carlos Badilla, he was not a religious man. Kilalang kilala ko po siya. Aktivista kami. Lumaki sa PCC. Na-develop ang pagmamahal sa bayan. Hindi po siya religious, but sabi ko nga po kay former governor ng Nebiskaya, Ruth Padilla, si Padi, si Kaloy, kitang-kita ko, Christianity in action. Christianity in action. Hindi siya religious pero ang kanyang buhay, yung puso niya, yung pagmamahal niya sa mga naapi cannot be moved. He, he cannot be bought. His principles cannot be bought. Kaya ako naniniwalang he is now enjoying the bliss of eternity with the Lord. At para sa pamilya po, bago ako mag-pray, sinabi ng 2 Corinthians 5, 8, sa mga tunay na ikinabubuhay ang pananampalataya sa buhay na Diyos, hindi sa salita kundi sa gawa, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He is now with the Lord. At sinabi sa Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, St. Paul said, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain or profitable. Kaya, gusto ko pong magwaka sa isang mikling prayer. Pwede po ba ang mga minamahal na sambahayan ni Honorable Carlos Padilla, former governor, Ruth, tumayo lang sandali at ang kanyang mga anak, Jojo, May, at yung bunso, si Paulo. Pwede po ba na tayo ay, pwede bang mahilingan ko po? Dahil ang prayer is making a courtesy call to the living God in His inner, inner chamber. 
This is a, a, a revelation from the Bible. A genuine prayer is not just asking something from God. It is not just talking to God. Actually, prayer is a courtesy call into the inner chamber of God the Father in heaven and joining forces, man's limited forces, joining the unlimited forces of the living God who created the heavens and the earth out of His Word. Pwede po bang ituro lang natin ang ating kamay sa pamilya ni Honorable Carlos Padilla? And makisa po kayo sa inyong puso sa, das sa dasal na ito. Dakilang Diyos, sama naming sumasa langit na may gawa ng langit at lupa na ngayon ay nakatingin sa lugar na ito. Naniniwala po kami na ang aming minamahal na Kaloy Padili na sa piling mo, He belongs to the so-called heavenly witnesses right now. Nakikita niyong buong mundo. Bilyong tao sa balat ng lupa ay walang panahon sa iyo. Ang karami na ilasing sa mga bagay sa sanlibutan. Dito sa loob ng chamber na ito, ng House of Representatives, this August Chamber, there is a simple but so significant uh, event, a necrological service in honor of our beloved friend, a great statesman in the history of Philippine politics, Honorable Carlos Mapili Padilla. Tinataas namin ngayon, O Diyos, ang pagsunod sa utos mo, the true religion is sympathizing with the orphans. Lord, itinataas namin sa iyo si former governor, never be sky governor, Ruth Padilla, ang kanilang mga anak. Lord, buksan mo ang langit sa kanila. Lay your hands upon them. Release unto them the surging resurrection power of Jesus, the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. Quicken, quicken their spirit, their soul, their mind, their body. At Lord, dalangin ko po, Panginoon, ibuhos mo ang lahat ng heavenly blessings sa kanila. Yakapin mo sila ng iyong pagmamahal. In the midst of bereavement, madama nila ang pagmamahal ng Diyos that the amazing grace of God is sufficient for them. And the assurance that their beloved Kaloy Padilla is now with the Lord in the future eternity. Salamat po, Panginoon. Basbasan mo ang kanilang buhay. Samahan mo sila. Cover them tightly with the blood of Jesus. Protect them from any evil thing, wicked thing. And continue to release unto them divine protection and divine provisions, supplying all their needs, not according to the economy of the world, but according to the economy of heaven. Supply their needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hanggang sa yung second coming, Panginoon, who, whichever comes first, the actual second coming of Jesus here on earth, or the so-called physical death, madatan mo sila, Panginoon, ready to meet you in the air, to be with you forever in your eternal home. Exceedingly, abundantly blessed the family of Carlos Padilla beyond their ability to think and pray to the awesome power of the Holy Spirit. Ganun din ang dalangin ko sa lahat na nakiisa sa prayer na ito, Panginoon. Basbasan mo sila at pagpalain. Higit sa lahat, bigyan mo sila ng assurance na ang buhay nila sa mundong ito hindi mawala ng kabuluhan sapagkat pag nabuhay sila ng may tunay na pagmamahal at pananampalataya sa Diyos at sa bayan, ay merong assurance of glorious eternity. Salamat po, Panginoon. Basbasan mo ang House of Representatives, ang buong leadership sa panguna ng aming Speaker Maldes, at mga Deputy Speakers, lahat na po ng member ng August Bading ito, basbasan mo sila't pagpalain with divine health and most of all, even spiritual blessings be unto them. Ang, ang pag-ibig ng Diyos sa na walang kapantay. Pagpapala ng Diyos anak na walang katapusan. Matamis na pakikipisa ng banal na Espiritu, sumaamin ang mga lahat. Lalo na sa bato isang may bahagi dito sa special tribute sa aming minamahal na Honorable Carlos Badilla. Tanging sa pangalan ni Kristo Jesus, ibinabalik namin si O Diyos ang lahat ng papuri at pasasalamat. Ikaw lamang ang tunay na dapat purihin sa mga pangriyang pangalan ni Jesus. Lahat po magsabi ng Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pwede po bang pakita natin sa Diyos ang pagbubunyi natin sa kanyang pangalan. Isang malakas na palakpak sa Diyos na buhay. Marami pong salamat. Muli, buong pusong pakikiramay sa minamahal nating pamilya, Carlos Padilla. Thank you, Congressman Brother Eddie. Eulogy by the Honorable Marcelino C. Laban Libanan, representative of the Four Peace party list and major minority floor leader 
and former representative of the Lone District of Eastern Samar during the 11th, 12th, and 13th Congresses. sa nagdadalamhating pamilya ni Congressman Caloy Padilla sa lahat po ng andirito ngayon at uh, lalo na ang aking mga former speakers na magkatabi Speaker Judy Benicia Jr. and Speaker Sunny Belmonte Jr. at uh, sa lahat ng dar ng dar ng dar ng dito ngayon magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat at sa sambayan ng Pilipino From the time he became mayor of the undivided municipality of Dupax until his passing the honorable Carlos Padilla served his constituents in Nueva Vizcaya almost continuously he was dedicated to his constituency, which makes him a consummate politician. I first personally came to know him when I was a neophyte in the House of Representatives, where I became his colleague during the 11th Congress. It was in the 12th Congress that he became the minority leader here in the House, a mantle of responsibility that, he has, now, that has now fallen on my humble shoulders. I hope that I will earn, earn the right to fill his shoes, shoes as the minority leader. It was in the 12th Congress, Congress that I was able to know him deeply. Maalala natin yung 12th Congress 2001 to 2004 at napakainit po ang kongresyong ito. Napakaraming pinagdidibatihan, napakaraming impeachment na ipinail nung panahon yun and I was the chairman of the Committee on Justice and Congressman Padilla was the minority leader. And one day, I received a call from him, and he was requesting me that we have a meeting. Pero napaka-sensitive po yung mga panahon na yun, na hindi ako bilang chairman ng Justice Committee pwede magpunta sa opisina ng minority leader o siya man ay magpunta sa aking opisina. Kaya we agreed that we will have a meeting outside Congress, pero in a public place para walang masabi kung sino mang makakita. Nagtataka ako kung bakit niya ako inimbita na napakainit yung mga usapin sa Kongreso nung panahon yun. Ipinakilala niya sa akin si Jordanian Mahmoud A.M. Asfor. I think mag-aalala niyo si Mahmoud Asfor. Si Mahmoud Aspor ay isang Jordanian who figured out an accident in Jordan in a desert highway na muntik siyang mamatay. Lahat ng dumaan po sa highway ay uh, hindi siya pinansin hanggang malapit na siyang mamatay isang sasakyang Pilipino ang laman huminto at sinave siya. Doon si Mahmoud Asfor na intriga kung sinong mga Pilipinong ito at nagpunta sa Pilipinas. Palagay ko nakapag-asawa siguro dito at doon sa bayan sa Nueva Vizcaya nagtayo ng isang farm at inilagay ang ating mga national heroes na pinangungunahan ni Dr. Jose Rizal. Yun ang ini-emphasize sa akin ni Congressman Carlos Padilla na kung ang ibang nationalities ay marunong magpakilala sa ating bansa how much more pa tayo 
Nakita ko na kahit chairman ako ng Justice Committee na siya ang minority leader, hindi siya nag-alangan ipakilala si Mahmoud Aspor na maging Pilipino sa ating bansa by legislative enactment. He authored House Bill No. 903 to grant Filipino citizenship to this Jordanian national Mahmoud A.M. Aspor, a bill which the House passed on third reading after the three months legislative meal. Unfortunately, the Senate was unable to act on it before the close of the 12th Congress. The bill was refiled in the 13th Congress by Congressman Rodolfo Agbayani and Congressman Padilla. And they found a champion in the Senate, no less than Manong Jani and really. And the, the bill finally saw the light of the, a day and became Republic Act number 9338. Congressman Padilla authored a lot of important laws. Narinig na po natin ang kanyang mga ginawang batas. Congressman Padilla, as a person, as a politician, and as a colleague, I would like to describe him in three words. Competent, hardworking, and a patriot. Kung Kaloy Padilla, your colleagues in the House of Representatives pay their profound respect to you and thank you and your family for your life you have given and they have given to our people and country in the name of public service. May you rest in peace. Thank you, Kong Ibanan. Eulogy by Honorable Robin Hood C. Padilla, Senator of the Republic of the Philippines. Sa uh, pangalan po, banal na pangalan, siyam na put siyam na banal na pangalan ng Panginoong may likha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Bismillahir wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi. Una po sa lahat, binabati ko po kayo ng pagpapala, awa at gantimpala na nag-iisang Diyos. Sa ating mga ginagalang na miyembro ng malaking kapulungan, sa aking mahal na kapamilya at minamahal sa buhay ng yumaong gobernador, Carlos Padilla, at sa mga kapwa ko po, lingkod bayan, sa mga kaibigan. Ako po ay uh, isa sa masasabing kamag-anak ng ating ginagalang at hinahangaan at sinasaladuan na mahal na gobernador at mambabatas. Ang amin pong pinagmulan ay sa lugar ng Nueva Ecija. Ang amin pong lolo, ang kanya pong ama ay magkasama po noong sa Malolos Congress noong 1930. Ang aking pong ama, si Assemblyman Roy Padilla at si Tito Kaloy ay magkaibigan. Sila po yung mga Padilla na nakuha yung dugo ng mga Padilla mula pa po sa Espanya. Ang aming pong mga ninuno ay naglingkod sa Espanya 
Hanggang sa nakarating po dito sa Pilipinas, sila pa rin po ay mga lingkod bayan. Kami naman po, yung mga padilya na napunta naman sa show business. Ang mga padilya po kasi dalawa ang pinupuntahan. Actually, tatlo. May mga lingkod bayan, may mga artista, may mga abogado. Ah, meron palang isa pa, boksingero. Yan po ang aming linya. Ako po kahit kailan, hindi ko po pinangarap na maging lingkod bayan. Ang akin pong pangarap lang talaga ay maging artista. Ngunit, dinala po ako dito ng isang alon na hindi ko po mapigil. At ang naging salamin ng pagsiservisyo sa publiko, dahil wala na po ang aking mahal na ama, ang naging salamin namin ay si Chuck Arlos. Alam nyo, sa mga nagbigay po ng pagpupugay sa kanya ngayong araw na ito, ako po'y nakaangat sa upuan sapagkat kanyang ipinaglaban. Malinaw na malinaw na kung ano ang ipinaglaban ng mga ninuno namin sa Espanya na ang isa pa naming uncle doon, isa naming lolo doon, ay napukutan ng ulo dahil sa kanyang pakikipaglaban para sa mga komuneros. Ibig pong sabihin, yung mga komun na tao. Katulad po ng sinabi ng ating mga magagaling na mambabatas kung paano niya pinaglaban ang mga manging isda, ang mga maglulupa, kung paano pinaglaban ang magsasaka, kung paano ipinaglaban ang ating mga katutubo, yan po si Chukaloy. Nung nagkita po kami, binisita po niya ako sa Senado. Ang sabi ko sa kanya, Chukaloy, paano kita matutulungan sa iyong bayan, sa iyong probinsya? Ang sabi niya, relax ka lang. Hindi ko kailangan ng tulong mo doon. Tulungan mo yung iba na nahihirapan sapagkat dyan sa Nueva Vizcaya, kayang-kaya ko na yan. Ganyan po siya, hindi siya mapagsamantala. Siya pa nagsabi sa akin, puntahan mo yung mga nangangailangan na katutubo sa ibang lugar. Yun ang puntahan mo. Huwag na ako. Ganyan po siya. Kaya nung nabalitaan po namin ng aking kapatid na si Kuya Romel na pumanaw na si Chukaloy, naligaw po kami. Anong direksyon natin ngayon? Siya ang pinakamatanda sa atin, hindi po sa usapin ng edad, kung hindi sa ideolohiya. Kung papano tatakbo, kung papano natin iuungos at papano natin iaabanti pa ang ating pangalan. Kaya po, mga mahal kong kababayan, napakahirap pong punuan ang sapatos na iniwan ni Chukaloy. Pero, Chukaloy, katulad po ng ating pag-uusap, hindi ko po kalilimutan lahat ang iyong ibinilin. Lalo na po nung lumapit ako sa iyo dyan, napakagwapo mo pa rin. Ang iyong wala po, nakangiti ka, parang sinasabi mong bahala ka na dyan. Hayaan niyo po, Chukaloy, lahat po ng inyong iniwan, lalong-lalo na sa edukasyon, ipagpapatuloy po natin yan, ipaglalaban po natin yan. At kahit kailan, insya Allah, ang inyo pong itinayong pangalan natin, yung ating pong apidido, kailanman, ay hindi po natin sisirain. Kaya po, mahal kong Cho, bilang panghuling salita, gusto ko pong malaman ninyo, una sa lahat, maraming salamat po sa suporta niyo po sa akin nung komandidato ako. Isang tawag ko lang sa inyo, sabi mo, hindi ka na kailangan pumunta dito, number one ka na dito. Kaya po nangyari, number one ako. Pangalawa, humihingi po ako ng paumanhin sa inyo, Cho Carlos, nung tumakbo ka sa Senado. Hindi ako nakarating. 
tawarin mo, Jo Carlos, mahal po kita. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Senator Padilla. Eulogy by the Honorable Speaker Ferdinand Martin G. Romualdez to be read by Honorable Deputy Speaker Camille A. Villar. Eulogy for the late Honorable Carlos M. Padilla, Governor of the Province of Nueva Vizcaya and former Deputy Speaker and Representative of the Lone Dis Legislative District of Nueva Vizcaya during the 8th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 14th, 15th, and 16th Congress. Pericles, a prominent Greek politician and military general once said, what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone, monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Today, we honor the memory of a true public servant whose outstanding legacy has been woven to countless people in all walks of life, our former esteemed colleague, the Honorable Carlos Caloy Padilla. As a seasoned statesman, Honorable Caloy Padilla exhibited a sterling lineup of accomplishments which elevated the standards of public service. His impressive political career spanned five decades, nearly 30 years of which he served as an accomplished legislator in these very august halls where we now honor him. While he started his political career as a municipal mayor of Dupaxtown, in Nueva Vizcaya, Honorable Caloy Padilla found this niche as a veteran legislator with his in inimitable expertise in parliamentary procedures and an extensive grasp of the dynamics of legislation. As an active student leader during his younger years, it is no wonder why Honorable Caloy Padilla promoted education, culture, and environment as a legislator. He championed the cause of public school teachers, students, and nurses. He pushed for free education, modernization of certain professions in the country, and the preservation of the Filipino language and culture. He was an ardent advocate for the promotion of the rights of the poor and the disadvantaged especially senior citizens, persons with disabilities, and indigenous peoples. He also called for the protection of the environment and the prohibition of discrimination on un unemployment. In his capacity as Deputy Speaker and Deputy Minority Leader, Honorable Padilla helped steer deliberations, and with his soft voice and calm demeanor, he tirelessly ferried his colleagues towards reaching a consensus amid contentious situations and had the ability to see past differences which showcased his eloquence, optimism, and excellent leadership capabilities. He stayed faithful to his belief that in public service, the welfare of the people must always be paramount. He was instrumental in the passage of important pieces of legislation, including Republic Act RA number 6655 or the Free Public Secondary Education Act of 1988, RA 6966 or the Philippine Librarianship Act, RA 6728 or the Government Assistance to Students and Teachers in Private Education Act, RA 9173, or the Philippine Nursing Act of 2002, RA 10821, or the Children's Emergency Relief and Protection Act, RA 7356, or the law creating the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, and RA 9502, or the Universally Accessible Cheaper and Quality Medicines Act of 2008, among others. Having dutifully accomplished his tasks as representative of Nueva Vizcaya, Honorable Padilla returned to his roots and pursued the gubernatorial post to further express his
his unwavering dedication to his fellow Novo Vizcayanos. His election for three terms as governor spoke of the high level of trust and confidence placed in him by his constituents. He was instrumental in the establishment of about 45 high schools in Nueva Vizcaya and was responsible for the conversion of the then Nueva Vizcaya Institute of Technology and the Nueva Vizcaya State Polytechnic College into the Nueva Vizcaya State University. He practiced transformational leadership and ushered in infrastructure projects and Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Program, Livelihood and Agrofishery Development Programs, Anti-Food Wastage and Food Security Measures, Environmental Protection Programs, Immunization Activities, and other socio-economic projects. He was particularly averse to large-scale mining in his province and stood against huge mining companies. Ladies and gentlemen, what Honorable Padilla achieved in his lifetime sums up into a legacy of selflessness, dedication, and integrity. Amidst the accolades and recognition bestowed upon him by various reputable institutions, he remained a humble and low-profile leader who had a remarkable resolve to extend help to the people he embodied the characteristics of a true and respected public servant. Personally, I have known Honorable Carlos Padilla during the three consecutive terms that we have served together in the 14th, 15th, and 16th Congresses. I must say that it is truly an honor to have the opportunity to work and learn from a highly admired political leader and statesman, the legend of the North. Honorable Padilla lived by the principles of service, compassion, generosity, and respect for self and others. His deeds are his monuments. We honor him best by striving to emulate these good deeds and embodying what public service genuinely means. My heartfelt and sincere condolences to his family, most especially to his wife, former Governor Ruth Padilla, and his children, Carlos Jojo II, Ruthie May, and Carlo Paulo. May God bless Honorable Carlos Padilla, his family, his constituents, and this country, the Philippines, which he so valiantly and unselfishly served in most of his lifetime. Rest in eternal peace, Sir Kaloy. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Mr. Rafael Gonzalo G. Garcia from the Committee Affairs Department will render a song entitled Devoted to You by the Everly Brothers. Darling can count on me till the sun dries up the sea until then I'll always be devoted to you I'll be yours time I'll adore your charm sublime yes by now you know that I'm devoted to you I'll never hurt you I'll never lie I'll never be untrue I'll 
never give you reason to cry I'd be unhappy if you were blue Through the years my love will grow Like a river it will flow It can't die because I know devoted to you I'd be unhappy if you I'm so devoted to you. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. At this time, the wife of the late Honorable Carlos Padilla and former governor of Nueva Vizcaya, Mrs. Ruth R. Padilla, will now deliver the response. Speaker Martin Romualdez, and all the members of the House of Representatives who are with us today. Our former speakers, Speaker Sunny Belmonte and Speaker Joe De Venetia. Our friends, former members, of this august body. Of course, our former president of the Congressional Spouses Foundation Incorporated, Madam Gina de Venecia. Sa inyo pong lahat, Secretary General Rinald Velasco, Secretariat, the officials and staff of the House of Representatives. Nandito rin po ang miyembro ng aming sangguniang panlalawigan. Sinamahan ho nila ako from Nuevo Vizcaya. We left at 12 midnight po just to be here early morning. Gusto ko po sana silang patayuin para po makita po ninyo ang suporta po ng aming mga miyembro ng sangguniang panlalawigan. Headed by our Vice Governor, uh, Euphemia Dakayo. Siyempre po, ang aking pong mga anak, ang aking pong pamilya, relatives and friends, and the only sister of Carlos Estrella. Sa ating pong lahat, magandang umaga. Ako po ay lubusang nagpapasalamat. Nakakataba po ng puso. Pagkos kami po ay nagdadalamhati sa mga oras na ito. Kasi hindi ko po inaasahan na makita ko po na ganyan si Carlos. May 4, I left for Honolulu. Hawaii, because I was to attend or to join a cruise in Hawaii. Before I left, he told me, you deserve that vacation. 
sabihin mo sa akin kung kailan ka magbo-board. So, nag-text po ako sa kanya, boarding na ako. And his reply was, good to know that, but I will surely be missing you. That, that, that was the last of it. Pagdating ko ho sa Honolulu, after I have checked in dun sa hotel namin, I received a call from my eldest son. He was crying. Nanay, wala na po si tatay. Hindi ko po alam how I accepted it. Nalaman ko na lang ho, my classmates were comforting me kasi ho, sumalampak na ho ako sa floor. I left him, he was so healthy. He was so happy doing the things that he did. Lalo na ho, open na ngayon ang mga fiesta. Every day, siya po ay nag ng mga meetings, fiesta. Napaka-workaholic ko. Tama po yung narinig ko sa inyo. Yung dedikasyon po niya sa kanyang trabaho. So I said, I have to go home by all means. Buti na lamang po, a friend sa Philippine Airlines talked to Mrs. Lu Shutan and I was booked for the following flight the next day. So I traveled ten and a half hours from Honolulu to Manila and another five and a half hours from Manila to Vizcaya but napakasakit po. I thought when I come back from my cruise, I will see again a very beautiful face, always smiling. And for us to do the things that we did together. But unfortunately, when I arrived, I saw him in a casket. Masakit po. At first, I blamed God. Why? Why? I have been so faithful to you. Why did you take him away from me? He has so many plans. This is just a almost hindi pa nga wala pang one year of his third term as governor. Ito pong last na election. Napakahirap po para sa kanya. But he did it once again. He survived. And sabi niya, I will do everything yung hindi ko pa nagawa sa loob ng anim na taon ng paninilbihan ko bilang gobernador, I will see to it that all the things that I want done para lang lalong mag, maginhawahan ang aking mga kababayan, yung mga pangarap ko para lalong gumanda, lalong umunsad, ang lalawigan ng Nueva Vizcaya na nagbigay sa akin ng buhay, na naggabay sa akin ng ilang taon, na naniwala sa akin kakayahan at literato, I will do everything the best I can in the last term of my leadership as governor. At seeing him there, those plans remain dreams. He started his political career at age 27. He was the youngest mayor and the most eligible bachelor mayor at that time. Hindi pa ho niya ako nakikilala. 
ako ho isang nurse, it was a, re a requirement for us then in 1975 that we have to render six months of rural service before we get our license as a nurse if we pass the board exam. Well, fortunate with God's plan that I wanted to go to Cebu, to Bacolod, to Davao. But my father said, no, go to Nueva Vizcaya. Kasi po ang roots din ng aking maraming kaming kamag-anak po ng father ko doon. You will be safe in Nueva Vizcaya. That's what my father said. And that's where I met him. We got married 77. He was already the mayor. In 78, he ran as uh, for Batasang Pampansa, an assemblyman. Tuloy tuloy na po yun. After six years as assemblyman, tumakbo po siya during the regular uh, uh, election for Congress. Tuloy tuloy na din po yun. Until now. A governor po. He is 78. Minus 27. So that means he has served 51 years in public service. Mas matagal pa po sa buhay o panahon na iginugol niya nung siya ay estudyante pa. Pero ako po bilang isang kabiyak, I am very proud of him. Ito pong House of Representatives, naging pangalawang tahanan po ni Carlos for 29 years. It has also been my second home because I have always been with him Kaya nga po, I was very active sa Congressional Spouses Foundation Incorporated from the time of the then Mrs. Makalinta, Makalintal. At dire-diretso na po. Until sabi nga po ni former speaker, Sunny Del Monte, kay Carlos, can I borrow Ruth to be the president of the CSFI at ako lamang po yata ang naging presidente na hindi asawa ng speaker thank you po speaker Belmonte dahil po dun sa oportunidad na yon lalo pong lumakas ako na suportahan si Carlos dito sa pangalawang bahay namin Kaya po kanina, no ako'y bumaba behind taka, yung, yung pong car na nagdala ng casket. I said to myself, when Carlos left, he was so fulfilled. Proud na proud siya sa lahat ng accomplishments niya. And I was also proud of the things that he has done in the many sectors, to the many sectors, especially the educational sector. Lab na lab po niya, yung sector na yan, bakit? Because he was, he came from a very poor family. Nung pong siya ay elementary, just to get by, siya po ay nag, nagbibenta ng newspaper, naging shine boy, just to get additional money for his expenses each day. Hindi po niya yun uh, So, nung, po, nung si po, po ay papunta na sa kolehiyo, Sabi po niya sa mother niya, 
I will not remain poor. And a proper education is the best way to uplift us from poverty. Nagkataon naman po, merong Philippine College of Commerce. During that time, yun po ang tinatawag na kolehiyo ng mga mahihirap. Dahil yun po, sila po pinakamababang tuition fee na sinisingil. He had to work. Nag-apply po siya 16 years old in a tobacco company that was owned and managed by Pedro Menjola Jr. Ayaw po nung manage, ayaw po ni Mr. Menjola na tanggapin siya. Kasi wala sa batas na tanggapin ang minor. 16 years old pero nagmakaawa daw po siya. Sir, parang awa niyo na. Gusto kong makatapos ng aking pag-aaral. Malay niyo po, balang araw, maging katulad din po ninyo ako. So from 8 to 5, he carries sacks of tobacco. 6 o'clock after work, diretso na ho siya sa PCC up to 9 o'clock. Kaya ang biro niya at kwento po niya sa akin, marami sana akong gustong ligawan, pero wala pong gustong lumapit sa akin kasi amoy tabako daw ako. But he worked hard just to be able to finish college, which he did. He graduated AB Economics. He taught at PCC, became an instructor, a medical representative at Unilab. But one day he said, May kulang sa buhay ko. And so he decided to go back to his town in Dupax. I want to serve as mayor. So si Dr. Prudente nun, ano, tatakbo kang mayor? Parang hindi sila makapaniwala. Yung pangarap, nangangarap, may, na, 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 Nagdi-dream ka ba? But he was so determined. So with 2,000 pesos, uwi po siya. Nag-file ng Certificate of Candidacy. Ang kalaban po niya, third termer na mayor. But God has plans for him. So he won overwhelmingly. And that was the start of his political life. Six years as mayor, three year, uh, four years as mayor of the undivided Dupax. So he was the last mayor of Dupax, but the first mayor of Dupax del Norte when it was divided into north and sur and south. Dun palamang po nakita na ng kanya mga kababayan. Paano ba magsilbi ang isang Carlos Padilla? Lahat po nagsasabi, napaka-humble, napaka-hardworking, napaka-dedicated. Yung pong mga indigenous peoples po namin na mga bugkalot, yung pong mahal na mahal niya. Wala pa pong kalsada going to their place talaga hong maglalakad. Aakyat po yan sa bundok. And that was the time, dahil po mga headhunters po yung mga bugkalot noon before he became the mayor. But because of him, he showed his love to them na wala na po yung ganun kanilang tradisyon. In fact, meron pong incident 
lumipad po by helicopter yung governor dun sa town na yun, ay sa barangay na yun. Ayaw, pa, ayaw nilang pababain yung helicopter. Sabi ng chieftain, kumuha ka muna sa Ilocano po. Kumuha ka muna ng permiso kay Mayor Carlos Padilla. Sabi ng governor, bakit ako kukuha ng permiso sa mayor? Eh ako ang governor. Hindi ho siya pinakinggan. Dapat kumuha ka. Pag sinabi ni Mayor Carlos Padilla, pwede kang pumunta dito, pabababain ka namin. That was how he was loved. And all the other minorities as well. As a wife, because I believed in his vision, I believe in what he wants to do. Kaya ako full support sa kanya. And even my children supported po because they understood even if there was not enough time for them, they understood and they felt what their father wanted. True service. Napaka-humble po. Napaka-bait. Wala ako kayong madidinig na hindi maganda sa kanya. In fact, even if other people say bad things about a person, you cannot hear anything na negative po sa kanya. In fact, pag meron hong nagsasabing masama isang tao, i-justify pa niya, siguro ganito lang yan, kaya ginawa niya. He knows who amongst his lead, who amongst the officials or mga tao, mga kababayan niya na hindi bumoto sa kanya. Who says bad words against him. Pero pag lumapit naman po sila sa kanya, the same treatment na binibigay niya doon sa mga sumuporta sa kanya. Kaya po, at this time of our grief, sa mga narinig ko po sa mga nagbigay ng eulogy, maraming salamat po sa inyo. Former speaker, Sunny Belmonte, former speaker, Joe de Venecia, a very good friend, former minority leader, Edsel Lagman, Congressman Rafael Mariano, and of course, ang amin pong kapatid, ang amin pong kaibigan, noong pa pong estudyante si Carlos, Deputy Speaker, Brother Ed Villanueva, Minority Floor Leader Marceluno Libanan, and of course, ang amin pong pamangkin, Senator Robin Patilia. Lahat po nung narinig ko sa inyong pagpuri, pagtitiwala, the kind words that you have expressed on who Carlos Padilla is, your good experiences with him while he was here in Congress. Nakakataba po ng puso. Maraming salamat po. Ito po ang isang paraan na nakakatulong po sa nararamdaman na ang pamilya namin ngayon. And please be assured you will always be in our hearts. 29 years of his stay here. 
29 fruitful, memorable, wonderful years. And we can always be proud of my husband and my children will always be proud of their father. Maraming maraming salamat ho sa lahat ng suporta, tulong, gabay, pagditiwala na ibinigay po at pinakita ninyo kay Carlos when he was here with you. And today, maraming salamat din po sa proof ng inyong pagtitiwala at pagmamahal kay Carlos. Maraming maraming salamat pong muli. I know Carlos is happy. Alam niyo po, speaker, ayaw niya, ayaw niya sanang pupunta dito nung, nung buhay pa uwi siya. Sabi niya, naku, Bakit ba dinadala pa niyang mga namamatay na congressman dyan sa kongreso? Kasi ang gusto, gusto sana ho niya ay magandang memory, memory. Pero sabi po ng daughter ko, Nanay, pag nailibing na si tatay, that's it. But for the 29 years that he has stayed, in Congress, pagbigyan mo na, I'm pretty sure that I will understand and will even appreciate it. Sabihin ko ho sa inyo, sa narinig ko at nakita ko ho, nakita ko po ang, ang aming mga kasamahan na dating nandito, Tante Liban, very good friend, of course. Senator Aimee, palagi ko pong naaalala kasi po si Carlos, hindi po siya madamot na mag-share na kanyang katalinuhan. Si, Pre, si Senator Aimee, nung Congress woman pa po siya, Pag siya ay magpi-privilege speech, pupunta muna po siya sa manong kaloy niya. May mga comments po si ko, konti lang naman si Carlos. Pagkatapos niyang sumagsalita, balik uli siya sa manong kalo, kar, kaloy niya. How was it, manong, when Carlos says, kaling? Tuwan-tuwa na po si Congresswoman Aimee Marcos noon. Si Vicky Luxin, si Mary Ancua, and Grace Singson during that time. First time po nila maging Congresswoman. And Carlos offered that every 3 p.m. come to my office. Nagpabili po siya sa akin ng malaking whiteboard. Tinuturuan niya sila. Yung first po na lecture ni Carlos, How a Bill Becomes a Law. Every Monday na po yun, I want, napakabait po. So every time I see them, how is my mentor? Karamihan po ng mga batang mga kongresista noon. Sinishare niya ng kanya experience. And they would always tell me, Manang, o tita, si tito, mentor namin. Yung palamang po nakakataba na ng puso. So Carlos has lived wonderful, fulfilled life. Kaya po kami. We feel that. And I know God has plans. Yung pong ang favorito ko pong verse, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. 
I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to hurt you. Plans to give you hope and plans to give you a future. We may not understand fully the reason why this happened. But I know there is a reason for everything that happens. And God knows what is best for all of us. God has other plans for my family. And we love God for that. Carlos died in his sleep. Heart failure, heart attack daw po, sabi nung aming doctor, provincial health officer. That in itself for me is a blessing from God. Hindi na po siya nahirapan, no struggle, no pain before he died. Kaya po, I know at this time he is already in one of the mansions that God has promised him. During Judgment Day, God will always ask, the angel will always ask, What have you done while you were on earth? I have given you much blessings. What have you done with those blessings? And with that question, I know when God, when Carlos faces God, yung tanong na yon, what have you done, my child, when you were on earth? Madali pong sasagutin ni Carlos yon. My Lord, my God, I have done my very best. I did what you want me to do for my people. And God will answer him. Well done, my child. Come. I have prepared a special place for you in my kingdom. And I know he is now there. He has answered God and he will not be occupying a special place in the mansion of the Lord. Again, maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat na nagbigay ng ang kanilang magaganda at mga eksperyensya. Include ka rin po, nakalimutan ko ang aking, ang aking pong parang anak na rin si Camille, De Deputy Speaker Camille Villar. Ang ating pong mga kabrads sa Alpha Phi Omega Beta Fraternity Ako din ho kasi e honorary member ng Ladies of the Knights of Rizal. Kasi po, member po si Carlos ng Knights of Rizal. Maraming salamat din po sa inyong pagpugay kay Carlos. So once again, maraming maraming salamat po. I will always regard this second home and will never forget never forget this home and never forget the people who are part of this home thank you very much Our Secretariat has prepared a short video presentation to comm commemorate the life of the late Honorable Carlos Padilla.
analyzing this because we are against graft and corruption. And I'm sure I do not begrudge those people who are uh, complaining about how PDAP is being implemented na kung may masama na bagay sa PDAP, baka mas malaki pa ang masama sa ibang departamento na hindi natin nakikita na dapat pagtuunan din natin ng pansin. I, Carlos M. Padilla, of, of the Lone District of Nueva Vizcaya, having been elected as, having been elected as Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, 16th he, Congress, hereby solemnly swear, hereby solemnly swear, that I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability, that I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability, the duties of my present position, the duties of my present position, and of all others I may hereafter hold under the Republic of the Philippines, and of all others I may hereafter hold under the Republic of the Philippines, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will obey the, law, the laws, legal orders, and decrees, and that I will obey the laws, legal orders, and decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines. Promulgated by the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines. That I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily. That I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily without mental reservation. Without mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Hello. For once prove that our laws provide us protection better than barricades do. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House would like to present its offering of legislative memorabilia to the family of the late Honorable Carlos Padilla. The House official is requested to escort the bereaved family to the rostrum.
The memorial service has now ended. offering will commence. The floral offering will commence.
<laughs> Agar Rahman.
Sa lunch. Kaya ba ko sila? Kaya tayo, tayo, tayo. 